Today I'm going to show you how I make chicken tinga in the slow cooker. This is a tender shredded spicy chicken. Typically you can boil this on the stovetop. Today it's going in my crock pot and it's perfect for tostadas. This is going to be good. I'm working with around a four pound whole chicken. Even if you have chicken pieces, whether it's chicken breast, bone in, legs, thighs, I'm working with four pounds. Maybe four and a half also works for this recipe. I'm going to be using 3.7 ounces of chipotle peppers in adobo sauce, two tomatoes. Here I have three wajillo chiles that I cleaned and destemmed. I have four cloves of garlic, one dried bay leaf, half of a medium onion. I'm also going to add like a tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder, salt and pepper to taste at some point granulated onion powder, granulated garlic powder, and I'm ready to put this in my six quart crock pot. Here I'm adding the chicken and I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. Now, when I have made this in the past, I added two cups or a can, one 14.5 ounce can of chicken broth, but today I'm changing it up because I know the chicken will render its own juices, so I'm not gonna add any liquid. So I wanna give an update on my Facebook situation. So if you're seeing this, I want to let you know I only post on YouTube, sometimes TikTok, but I'm probably not gonna post there a lot either. They changed the name to Simply Cooks and someone also started a new Facebook page that does have all of my info on it with my profile picture. That is not me either. This is not me. These are scammers and hackers living their best hacker scammer life. I will never post on Facebook, and if I ever do, I will announce it here on YouTube. I'm only posting on YouTube. This is where you can find me, not even Instagram. I also want to mention, for those of you that are going through the same thing, I am so sorry you're going through this. It really sucks, and Facebook literally is zero help. Okay, cover with a lid. I'm gonna set this to high and let it cook until tender and falling apart around four hours. And after four hours, I am going to remove all of those like aromatics, chili peppers, the tomato, onion, and garlic because I am going to puree it to make a sauce to mix into the shredded chicken. And you can see that it did render a lot of natural juices, which is exactly um, what I was hoping for. But if you don't feel comfortable just putting chicken with all these ingredients without liquid, add a can of like chicken broth, like maybe a cup or two. And when you go to add the puree back, maybe remove some of the liquid if it's too much. This is kind of why I tested it without adding liquid because the last time I made this, it was just too much liquid and I kind of regretted adding the puree on top of that. <laughs> okay, so once everything is removed out of the crock pot as far as the veggies and chili peppers, set it to the side. And what I'm going to do is start shredding this chicken. Look how tender this is. This is like a spoon and it's just falling apart. So this might seem tedious, but it kind of falls apart and straight off the bone. So it's so easy just to pull all the bones out of the crock pot before shredding. This takes me all of like five to 10 minutes. It's really not as tedious as you might think removing the bones from the, the chicken because it's so tender, fall off the bone. It's not that hard. So most of the bones are removed and I'm just going to press it and shred it. It's super easy to shred. I, I literally am just mixing it with tongs and it's falling apart. And as you do this, you will find the smaller bones. Just take them out. Super simple. Now I'm going to puree all of the chilies, tomato, onion, and garlic. By the way, I did remove the bay leaf. I didn't show you that, but you'll want to remove the bay leaf at this point. So I'm going to add salt to taste, measure with your heart, and then I will be adding one cup of water. You could add chicken broth and puree well. Now I'm going to add this right into the shredded chicken and combine well. Taste it for salt and seasoning, adjust to your preference. I'm gonna cover with a lid, set it to low or keep warm, and it's ready. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on refried beans because I'm making tostadas today. Preheated pan, I'm gonna add just a little bit of avocado oil and I'm going to add some diced onion. That makes the oil very aromatic. It adds great flavor to the beans. 
I have a leftover container of just boiled pinto beans that I did not add salt to, so I am gonna add salt. Season how you prefer. I'm going simple today, and I'm just going to let these kind of simmer and cook and heat through before I start mashing. I'm also adding some cracked black pepper, and then I'm going to mash well. And you can see that they've kind of simmered and softened and heated through because they've been sitting in my refrigerator. So they were kind of cold going into the pan. And once I have these mashed well, I'm gonna let them simmer until they kind of thicken, especially if you have a lot of liquid in the pan, you wanna let them simmer gently. And then once you reach the desired thickness or texture to your beans, you can shut off the heat and these are ready. Here I have a baking sheet lined with paper towels. I have my cold corn tortillas, and I'm gonna fry these up to make tostadas. Preheated oil, around 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm just going to fry them on both sides until they are light golden brown and crispy. You could also buy store-bought. That definitely is a lot easier. I didn't have store-bought today, so I'm frying my own. So give it a flip and just a couple of minutes on the other side. It kind of takes like somewhere between a minute to two minutes on each side. Again, make sure you preheat the oil. And then it looks like this. It's this like golden brown color. Let some of the residual fry oil run off and right onto the paper towels and repeat the process. So here I have all of them fried to golden brown perfection. And here are the toppings for the tostadas, onion and shredded lettuce, avocado, crema or sour cream, and here I have queso fresco, and my chicken tinga that's been on warm. It smells amazing. Let's put the tostadas together. I'm just going to smear the beans, and you see as they set, they definitely thickened. If you want creamier beans, just don't let them simmer as long. And once I spread the beans, I'm going to add my tender shredded chicken tinga. And if you want it spicier, you could definitely add chile de arbol in when you add the guajillo chiles, add more chipotle peppers. There's so many ways to add more spice and heat to this. I'm gonna top with the lettuce. Here I'm adding the sour cream right on top of the lettuce. I'm also going to add some of the queso fresco. Sometimes I add cotija cheese as well. Here I'm gonna top it with fresh avocado slices. And this is it. If you want a nice spicy salsa on top, go for it. It is your world. If you want to make a tostada and build it and top it how you like, that's great. Okay, so this is dinner. It's delicious. I can't wait to dig in. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.